recording. Okay, I can start with the, um, oh, well, we've got roll call. So we'll give me a minute. We'll give it a minute. Just sitting on the We'll just give it another minute to see if anybody else hops over from the other meeting. You know, by the time you get through with the roll call, someone else will be on. You might want to start. Okay. Um, good evening. As a preliminary matter, I am Tina Burgos, member of the Medium Human Rights Committee, and I will be chairing this meeting. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Sophia? Yes. Cynthia? Yeah. Jen? Yes. Carrie? Here. Amelia? Yes. Belinda? Yes. Ashok? Yes. Marcus, not yet. Jared? Yes. Bud? No. Marlene? Yes. Julie? Yes. And Katie. Here. Good evening. This open meeting of the Needham Human Rights Committee is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings, and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting is a webinar and will allow the public to comment. For this meeting, the Needham Human Rights Committee is convening by Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and that take care not to share or screen your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each, each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, I will go down the line of members inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. 
Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until, the ch until I yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. For items with public comment, after members have spoken, I will afford public comment as follows. I will first ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once I have a list of all public commentators, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call votes. Okay, did I miss Cynthia for roll call? Can I just get a yes, Cynthia? You're on, you're on mute. Sorry. Yes, okay. I am here. Thank you very much. And Marcus? I'm here, yes. Okay, thanks. Bud, are we on yet? Is he with us yet? Okay. Um, let us approve the minutes, excuse me, from February 25th, 2021. Does anybody have any changes, comments, other than the uh, those that were, that were submitted to me earlier this week? Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Uh, and can I no have move. a second? second? Okay, can I have a second? Second. Okay. Sophia? Uh, yes. Cynthia? Yes. Jen? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Amelia? Yes. Ashok? Yes. Marcus? Yes. Jared? Yes. Marlene? Yes. Julie? Yes. And I am a yes. The meeting minutes from February 25th, 2021 have been approved. Public participation, Katie, do we have anybody with us tonight? We do not. Can you close that door for me, please? Okay. Um, before we move on to the first item on the agenda, I just wanted to hand it over to Amelia. Um, it's about a sponsorship for an event that's coming up. So Amelia, do you wanna walk us through that, please? Yes, I asked to do this because um, as, as soon as we make um, a decision on this, I have to contact the person doing the publicity so they can send it out. As most of you know, a vigil is being planned. It began yesterday at the Needham Diversity Initiative uh, to invite people to come to the town common on Saturday at 2 p.m. Um, to uh, acknowledge um, our Asian American neighbors and in solidarity with them. Um, many groups in the town, this is um, the rapid response uh, case study. Uh, people have been working all day today um, on, on this. And I um, would like to make a motion. Uh, and the motion is, I, a motion that the Needham Human Rights Committee be a co-sponsor of the vigil for our Asian neighbors in Needham, which will take place at the town common on March 23rd. 2021 at 2 p.m. Anyone second? Second. Oh. Wait, isn't it tomorrow? It's this Saturday, right? Saturday. Saturday. It's March 19th. March, March, March 23rd. Isn't it? 20th. March 20th. I'm sorry. March 20th. March 20th. <laughs> I'm Excuse sorry. Me. I'm so, It's March 20th, two days from today. Any, any uh, uh, comments or um, any discussion about this? Can we take a vote? Yeah. Tina? Call the question. Sophia. Oh, sorry, Marlene, go ahead. I'm just gonna say you call the question when you wanna take a vote. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what that means, I'm sorry. It's okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Sophia. Yes. Cynthia? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Amelia? Yes. Ashok? Yes. 
Marcus. Yes. Jared. Yes. Marlene. Yes. Julie. Yes. And I am also a yes. The motion is passed, Amelia. Tina and Amelia, could you just tell me um, for the minutes who else is co-sponsoring the event? It's quite Cynthia, maybe. I, the, the list was increasing uh, as we speak. Um, I could give that to you uh, after the meeting, but it's uh, clergy, and Cynthia, you can chime in too. Um, Needham Diversity Initiative, Clergy Association. Um, Equal Justice Needham. At my, at my neighbor's table. I think North Hill. Cynthia is in their North Hill group. It's, it's like 10 group. people. It's, it's quite a large number. And I could okay. share that information. Um, CPAC. Um, and I have to get my iPad. That's okay. Thank you. I, I, can, I can look at the flyer, I guess, too, after it comes out. Thanks. I can get that to you uh, later. Does anybody else have any other questions? Uh, yes, uh, Amelia had sent you information about two newsletters. Uh, maybe you have received that. You can forward the information to those two so we can get increased attendance. Oh, uh, were you talking about the Indian? Yeah. Uh, or the Asian? Um, yes. Ashok sent, yes. <laughs> sent me two resources that, that uh, Needham Diversity Initiative will contact. Um, do you want to tell us what, because we certainly would be interested for future reference for our events, Ashok? So the these are largely circulated newsletters, you know, I think they go to almost like 10,000 uh, Indian families in Massachusetts. So I thought that would be a good place to put this at. Thank you. And we at no cause, so why not? Katie. Uh, Amelia, let me know if um, if you want or any formal participation from the town. I know you had the request for the common, but um, for speakers or the police chief attendants or anything else. Oh, Invitations are being sent out, but I will get back in touch with you, Katie. I'll make sure you're in, in that. Okay. Yeah. Whatever you need. Yeah, I know they, 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 this, this has been going on constantly. There's just been a, a thread of emails since eight o'clock this morning. <laughs> that Cynthia? <laughs> so I will get back to you. Okay. Uh, this is a, a comment that uh, Amelia said, this is like a case study of rapid response. And as we're moving into the discussion later to kind of be, uh, be thinking of this as an example of Amelia and I were at a meeting last night where this came up and we, we wanted to be able to have the Human Rights Committee be a sponsor. Just happens we have a meeting today, but that felicitous occasion will not always happen. So I think it's a good example of something that's very much in line with what we do and how uh, to keep that in mind when we're thinking about later on when we're discussing how we see the Human Rights Committee working in this town. Thank you. Does, any, does anybody else have any questions or comments about the yes, vigilance? Yes, I do have a comment, Tina. So how come Human Rights Committee members didn't get any information till Amelia contacted me? It was just, I think, one-on-one -on -one rather than all the members. So shouldn't the Response Committee have contacted all the Human Rights Committee members? Hmm. I don't have an answer for that. Katie. I think um, I've not been involved in the planning of the vigil and there is no response network formally. So I think that's part of this discussion, right? People are cobbling it together okay. with the relationships that exist right now. Right. Um, so I, um, I found out about it uh, when there was a request for space, um, but I think it's worth discussion how you guys want to share information amongst yourselves. But hopefully this will be 
uh, organized once we have the rapid response um, network in place. And, and I think this, this might be a good situation for us to look at in terms of how we might respond in the future. Cynthia. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was our intent, I believe, to send it to Tina for the membership, but it's always a little bit tricky. Do we as individual members feel free to send something out to the whole membership? So I believe that Amelia contacted Tina and we wanted to share it with everybody, but we're still in that, how do we do that in a way that fits with the town regulations? So I immediately, while we were at the meeting last night, sent it to the clergy association and this morning they got it out to everybody. That's how a rapid responding of a network works. But we kind of don't know exactly, my, this is me, Mia Kalpa, I'm part of it, that uh, we wanted to share it, but I wasn't sure what the appropriate way. So it's a really good question. Amelia. Could I say, this is still a work in progress or it was until about an hour ago. We were still deciding who would be invited and who the speakers were, who, I don't even know. I have to go back to my email. I don't even know who the moderator will be. I mean, this is still a work in progress. No, no, no. So, and that was another reason, Ashok, why uh, we didn't send any formal or semi-completed um, uh, version of what was going to happen. It was just evolving all day long today. No, I understand that. My comment was more about we were actively involved about the re rapid response system, mm -hmm. right? So I thought we would be one of the first ones to be uh, notified and we can use our own network also to inform people. That's about it. I'm not doing any finger pointing or anything like that. It was more a rhetorical yeah. question, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I certainly didn't take it that way, but I feel like this is a good segue into um, the discussion about priorities that we want to take on for the next six, 12, 18 months. Um, I had sent to you guys on the agenda and the three things that sort of keep coming back um, are the discrimination complaint process, the rapid response network, community engagement and education. Um, so we talk about these issues sort of very broadly and then specifically, for example, with this visual, um, the response network. Cynthia, you had mentioned to me um, yesterday the policing issue um, and community engagement and education around that. So I, first of all, do you guys feel like these priorities are, um, are we, is that correct? Is this the right direction that we wanna move in? If not, what, what else you know, should we be considering? Um, and then I think we can talk a little bit more particularly about the response network because there's a lot going on behind the scenes uh, with different parties. And I also am very, um, I need to sort of ramp myself up on the education because I'm not clear as to who is doing what. And so it makes it a little difficult <laughs> to figure out um, how we fit into this when I don't, I'm not familiar with all of the pieces. That's just something that I'm gonna to have to become familiar with since I haven't been a part of this committee for, um, you know, it's been, a, I've, I've had a very short tenure. So what do you think about those three priorities? And do you, you know, I think we, sh we should discuss it. The goal for me is to kind of hammer out what we wanna do, take it and figure out the time frame to see what is manageable and then take it to the select board and talk to them about, you know, this is this is kind of what we've hammered out. Um, and hopefully we can really start the process of communication. We can open that up and start to get some things done. Amelia. Could you repeat them again, the three uh, items? Yeah. Please. Discrimination complaint process, the rapid response network, community engagement and education. Shook. So I'm fine with these priorities, but I thought the bigger issue was we wanted some independence, you know, to make a statement. And after the last meeting, it seems like uh, other commission and committees do have more freedom. And in our case, for anything we want to do, we 
have to go to the select board and it takes very, very long. So I thought that was a big bottleneck. And even if we get these priorities straightened out, how to uh, address that bottleneck would be a big issue for, for us. Well, my understanding of sort of um, after talking with a couple of people on the select board to try to get a better understanding of where they're coming from, um, I think they want to really see from us something that's concrete as far as priorities are concerned so that we can basically onboard them with what we're trying to do. Um, I, I understand the communication has been, you know, it's been a really difficult sort of um, process. Um, but I also feel like the onus is also on us to give them as much information as we possibly can so that they can make some considerations and we just have to stay on top of them. You know, I'm on the Council of Economic Advisors. There is constant communication with, with the select board, constant, um, to get things done with, you know, the small business community, what's happening in the N Squared Innovation District. So I think part of that is, you know, taking the step to meet with them and at least discuss specifically what we want to get done over the next, you know, a short term, as I said, 6, 12, 18 months that's a little bit manageable, more manageable for them to understand. Um, and then we can go from there with the specifics. I, mean, I don't know, maybe it's, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg. Amelia. Maybe to begin this process, we might start with the presentation from the Arlington uh, Human Rights Commission that we were all very excited about. And uh, I had a conversation with Dan Matthews and his, response was that he was very uh, interested and excited about what was presented, um, including the, the uh, degree of autonomy mm -hmm. that the commission had in making decisions. Um, and maybe we might begin that about what we, where we want to be, what we uh, want to do. Maybe we might want to look at elements of the commission, of the Arlington Commission, begin there and select and perhaps think small, but begin to um, build on what we have been and what we want to be. Cynthia. Okay, um, I'm imagining either as a preamble or after our list of priorities saying something like in order to achieve these, we need this level of autonomy and we need this level of communication so that not to put that all together and hand it to them. And if they like it, then say, oh, but we need to have more independence. I see that as like a either a preamble or at the end, the conditions under which we would be able to do these actions. And that fits right in with what Amelia was saying with the um, Arlington group. They would not be able to do the things they did without being um, constituted as a more autonomous group. Yeah, Marlene. I also think um, if we looked at Arlington, they have regular meetings with um, select board. Uh, and I'm not quite sure, you know, how, if it's just the chair at the time um, who meets with someone on the select board. But um, I think that what we have done by having this meeting last week and, uh, and uh, or, I mean, last month, and then I know at least Dan, so that means three of the people on the select board um, have, uh, have seen the meeting. Uh, I think that they now realize the potential that a good, uh, well-supported human rights group in town has. Um, so I think that's a change. Um, and I also had a conversation with Dan um, after he, he, he called me also after he saw the, um, uh, the meeting. Um, and I talked to him a bit about how our hands have been tied. And he actually said he thinks he was responsible for some of that. Um, he took ownership for that, which I thought was um, very nice of him to do and interesting to, to hear him say that, because um, that was around when we were um, working on the, the transgender bill. Um, so, um, so I think that the, the time is ripe um, for us to, 
you know, to move forward. Um, one of the things that I wanted to say about the rapid response is I think you sent the document out to everybody that the select board um, is uh, asking NDI um, to have it have the rapid response sit under NDI um, and that they would manage it that we could we could sit on it but it's not going to come under us so I don't know that that's then a priority for us. If it's not going to, NDI, I don't think has agreed yet. Um, from what I know at the last meeting, I mean, they're doing their own reorganization and figuring out who's going to be in charge. Um, so um, if it sits there and we have some representation, then I don't know that it becomes a priority for us in terms of working all that out. It would be the leadership team who works on the rapid response with representation from the human rights committee um so in some ways i'm saying let's we don't need to keep that as the priority at this point that's the way i view it i don't um i think it would be interesting to both hear from cynthia and amelia because they're on ndi um and to know where ndi is with it or if there's any updates oh katie i just want to um marlene to your point you know, there has been this planning committee for over zero and what has come out of that is the draft for the response network. And, and that's been Marlene and myself, Dan Matthews, Rebecca Drill for NDI and Nicole Ben Argo, um, Argo Ben Itzak for Project Zero. So I just wanna make a point of clarification just for everyone about where we are in that process for the response network. The select board as a group has not at all vetted or discussed or debated the format of that response network. We, as a planning committee, provided the workshop attendees with a draft to react to, to help us get some insight after, as part of that workshop, you know, what people's feedback was. And the second draft was a reflection of all of that feedback from the workshop participants. So it's, it's not the select board asking NDI to take it, it's draft two, of the proposal from the feedback that we got from all those workshop participants. And one of the things that we heard was that people wanted us to shift it from what we originally proposed, which was town owned and community engaged type of network to a community owned network with town engagement. So, so that was the kind of origin of draft two, but I'd also say it is very much just a draft two and the sharing of that draft with Rebecca to share with NDI board was out of respect for them to not want to share it broadly with the public before mm -hmm. NDI had some chance of discussing it as a group because if they absolutely hated the idea, we wanted to give them that opportunity to say that. But it's very much still in the policy process. So Marlene, to your point, I, I, I really hope that HRC would not walk away from the response network because there's so much work still to be done to even get it to a place where it is even an actual thing. Like we're still collectively all vetting that process. So that- I know. Thank you for the clarification. It's not, I wasn't saying we should walk away from it, but based on the model that, um, that I think NDI is thinking about that was presented um, from the planning committee um, that it wouldn't sit under HRC, it would sit if NDI accepts it. They and you know that's not clear to me if they would accept it. So that's why I'm saying yes, it still is a priority. I think, but I think that it changes the priority for us um, in terms of of our work. It sort of moves it. Up. I mean, we're still involved, but it doesn't move it as the highest priority. Is that clear? Cynthia. Uh, Marlene knows I have a different view of this. And NDI was working on their organizational structure. They did not talk about it the evening. They did talk about it. Marlene and Amelia were there. There were a lot of questions. How would, they re would this relate to the town and so forth? And I understand it's a work in progress. I was very struck by the Arlington Human Rights Commission 
structure where they're an autonomous group, which was one of the objections to having the Human Rights Committee take the role that they were proposing in DI because our hands were tied. Our hands shouldn't be tied. We should be have more autonomy. And if we were like the Arlington Human Rights Commission, the whole process of individual complaints and how it goes into a community thing and a rapid response, they're all interrelated. And it made so much sense reading their structure. And I followed up some um, after the um, NDI meeting to see how they were connected together. They are not separate. The uh, rapid response team is under the Human Rights Commission of, of Arlington as is the complaint process. And often individual ones do go into community things. So I, I think it begs the question of the role of the town just to say that put a nonprofit in charge, there still has to be worked out the relationship with the town. Again, not to criticize what's been done. It's incredible, incredible where we're at. It's a wonderful place to be at with, with this commitment to create a network that has community engagement and somehow relates to the town. And I keep thinking that the Human Rights Committee, if we are up to doing the kind of work that's happening in Arlington, that it would be the ideal place to have the housing for both the individual complaints and the rapid response team. Does anybody else have any other comments or feelings about that? I mean, I think that's, that's, that's a big, you know, we're sort of coming at it from two different angles and that we have to figure out um, how we want that to fit into the structure of our, 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 our group. Marlene. Um. I mean, I think at this, for me, um, at this point, I think there's no place in town where there is anyone who is listening to complaints from people. Um, and until the rapid response piece is sort of figured out, I think that it would be good for us if we feel in this group that we have the bandwidth to take on a complaint process. And I think that's a really big question. Um, I would, I think it would be great for us to go forward with that. And it doesn't mean that we couldn't then um, take on rapid response as part of that. But I think we have to figure out if we have the bandwidth because that's a really big responsibility. Um, I can tell you that um, something came up recently uh, that went to NDI that someone who had a complaint that should have come to us, but it turned out it wasn't actually from this town. They were looking for resources. Um, it was someone who lives in Medfield. So, um, so there are people who need a place to go if they have a complaint. And I think that that to me is the perfect role for a human rights um, committee. How does everybody else feel about that? Amelia. Well, I think we we can cite at least one case where um, it took a long time to resolve or, or to help people resolve. And that was the, um, the situation with parents uh, whose children were being placed, were being tracked in the Needham schools. And a group of parents uh, hired a lawyer, uh, I believe it was at the High Rock School. It was, I don't remember which school, um, but anyway, they came to the, and, and Jen, you were, um, I believe they contacted you and you took some of the initial steps, uh, important steps um, to get us together, uh, to bring them to the Human Rights Committee. But if my memory uh, is correct, uh, they came to the Human Rights Committee to share uh, formally, they did through uh, lawyers, um, but they came to us for support. And, and and Jen, maybe you could comment on that. It took a long time, but it ended in the equity report. And it's still, I mean, the results of that initial <clears throat> support that we gave, a hearing and support and connecting 
Uh, and I remember the first meeting that Jen, I think you had organized uh, one of the, the um, uh, people you, you recommended that the parents talk to was Dan Gutekens. And I remember that meeting that we had in his office with the parents and, and a few human rights uh, members were able to be at that meeting. Uh, I know I was in Jen and I don't remember who else, but the parents were there and it was the first conversation they had with Dan, uh, informal conversation. And, and I'm sorry, Jen, why don't you share? Thanks, Amelia. I, I do think that that was a, a really good example of where, um, where the Human Rights Committee did have the opportunity to be available to community members who had issue and also um, act in a way to facilitate a solution. So obviously we weren't, we, we weren't fact finding, we weren't making any, um, any judgments or recommendations per se, but we were able to use our position within the town government and what kind of influence that had to get um, to get a meeting with Dr. Goodkanst and bring bring everybody together, um, and I think it was you know the first step in what was a very long process for the parents um, in trying to come to some kind of resolution. But it it was a really good example of how this this process and us being kind of a repository for those kind of concerns really worked well. I think that um, a couple of years later. I'm not sure if it was, it may not have been a full two years later. I think that we had a similar opportunity um, when um, residents were coming to us to talk about the, um, the ballot initiative a couple of years ago to support uh, transgender rights. And that we had like a very opposite kind of impact that when we tried to raise, um, raise awareness around the issue and bring people together to talk about it, um, we were met with a very different reaction. Um, and that was kind of, to me, the first time that I felt like um, we, we weren't able to kind of move ahead because we thought it was something important that we, we fit, met some roadblocks in terms of um, our ability to advocate kind of organically based on what we as a committee had decided we wanted to support um, when it came up against what the town government felt comfortable with doing. And it was one of those situations where I felt like that the community members that originally came to us um, seeking our support with, um, with supporting uh, the transgender community really felt let down by um, our ineffectiveness. Okay, so how do we feel about um, really focusing on the discrimination complaint process, making that, Julie? Yeah, I, I just wanna say, I, I think it feels like one of the more tangible things we could actually do. And, and my, I think I joined the committee right around when this transgender issue was happening. So I've only ever seen kind of like this butting heads side of things and, um, this feels like an opportunity to lay out exactly the process we want to, to do, get that approved and maybe kind of stop having these conversations over and over again with the select board. And if we can have this tangible process, I agree with Marlene with what Marlene said, that it's something like, it just really makes sense to fall under this committee and feels like something we could do a good job at. Does anybody else have any other thoughts or concerns about making that a top priority. And I know I, I, I know it's frustrating for you guys, especially for those of you who have been on this committee for a while, but I'm hoping that at least with something like this, and again, we open up the lines of communication, um, we, if we can get a process put into place and it's something that we can really move forward with. I'm not, I'm very hopeful. I'm not, you know, I, I, I feel like Look, this has been a really shitty week for me. <laughs> so as a woman, an Asian woman. Um, and so this is 
the bumps in the road as far as communicate. This is, I, I told Dan the same thing. I told Mo the same thing. I told Marianne the same thing when we had conversations last week or right after our last meeting. Um, if this is the worst of it right now, then that's, this is a dream. So trying to figure out how to open up the lines of communication and make that effective and make something like this happen. I, I, I really, I believe in us and I, I think that we can do it. Um, yeah, Cynthia. Okay, um, I wanna come back to what Marlene said because uh, I think this is, you know, where the middle hits the road or I have, may have the wrong thing, a uh, wrong image, but I think this will require a, a dedicated commitment from people. And I totally agree that this, what Julie, that this is a concrete place to start, but I do really need to raise what Marlene said. If we're having trouble finding somebody be, to be chair, well, maybe it will be easier if we have a concrete um, commitment, but people are going to really need to make the commitment. We aren't, when we're proposing something to the select board to see what they think, we have to be our, we have to have our, ourselves, our personnel behind it. And I, I think if we're gonna call ourselves a human rights committee, we need something significant to do. And I totally agree that this would be an important priority, number one, to put forward. Jen, you were gonna say something? Really just kind of what Cynthia said was that one of the things that struck me um, from the presentation that we heard last month was that he does an awful lot of work. It sounded like a whole lot of time that he was putting in to it and that, um, you know, much more than an hour and a half, um, you know, once a month. So that it would be something that I, you know, I think that everybody on the committee would really have to decide if it was something that they were gonna be able to commit to in that way. I mean, it sounded like a part-time job to me when to hear him describe it, um, frankly. Is but he had a lot of support. I mean, I, you know, he was also, I don't think he was sort of, there's a coach, you know, he has a co-chair, they rotate out who handles the complaint process on a, what was it, a monthly basis. Um, I could just and, but yeah, I think everybody has to sort of like, you, we have to commit, you have to commit to it and, and make sure that once we have the process put in place, there's a, there's a process of delegation and we just have to kind of stick with it. They have a staff person too. Yeah. Marlene? Um, he does have a co-chair, but um, the, I actually even talked to Dan about this. And um, when Amelia and I were chairing this um, committee, we met with the vice chair of the select board several each year, because that person changes and that person is in charge of committees um, to explain to them that when they are appointing people to say, to, when you come on this committee, this is a working committee. This is not an hour and a half, um, a week or a month kind of commitment, but that we want people who are willing to do the work, not just come and vote and help us deliberate, but to really get their hands duty, dirty and do the work. Um, and it seems like it's been really hard to get that across to the select board in their appointments. Um, so if in fact we're gonna take this on, every single person has to agree that they have the time, the energy and the commitment to take on this work. Mm -hmm. Katie. Um, I just wanted to echo your hope, Tina, in the sense that on the downside, I think it is universally acknowledged now that the lack of a clear process is a gap in town and it needs to be filled. But I um, feel like I've heard a lot of positive um, informal discussions about HRC taking this role on if you want to prioritize it and um, you know, I think collectively figure out what does that process look like and get it finalized and have it be a set policy. And um, so I, I am also hopeful and think there's a lot of common ground here. Okay, Amelia. We have a, a model that we could look at, which I shared with you, um, I think it was last year that we found in the archives, there was a system <laughs> in place a complaint process system. And we could begin by looking at that. 
uh, and then determining what what job, what tasks are needed and how that could be uh, divided amongst the group. And sometimes the tasks might be very small. For example, I have been looking at the uh, Human Rights Committee Gmail account, and it's very difficult to keep up with that. Um, and I was going through um, and I realized that might be a task for one person to do. Uh, and it might be uh, something related to um, a complaint process uh, mm -hmm. activity. Uh, so, I mean, tasks like that, uh, um, it might not be as overwhelming as we think, uh, but maybe we might begin by looking at what was done in the past, reviewing, I could send those materials to you again, that we found that this was in, Marlene, do you remember? I think it was in the 90s. Yeah, it was in, it was in the 90s. I mean, I can I say, are you done, Amelia? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tina, can I say two things? Yeah, of course. Um, I want to. I think that this is a really important role. I think um, to have a, a well-developed complaint process for this town says something about this town, and that that it's part of the Human Rights Committee. I think um, it's very positive. Uh, I think um, I would be very proud to be part of that. And I would suggest that, that we have a subcommittee who initially starts working on, if we vote that this is what the priority is, we wanna go, a subcommittee starts to do the work and then presents it because it's, you can't do this by whole committee. It mm -hmm. needs to be subcommittee. Um, I think you get a lot more accomplished that way and then the whole committee can respond to it. Um, I think that's a great idea. Does anybody else who hasn't spoken have any other? Carrie? Um, I think this is all great. And I think it's all what, it's a lot of what we've talked about wanting to do. I, I still think we're all stuck in the position of the select board being our stopgap. Like we can have everyone come to us and we can, you know, want to do what we want to do to help and respond and all that. But if we still have to go through the select board, I think we're just going to run into the same issues that have me extremely frustrated. Um, so I just, uh, I'd love to see us be able to do that. I just think there has to be a clear sort of free reign given to the Needham Human Rights Committee from the select board to do what we think is right. And if we're not given that, then to me, it's not worth our efforts because it's like banging your head against the wall. That's, that's just my two cents. Well, and I think that's, that's a conversation. So after, after we meet tonight um, and, uh, you know, we have the notes compiled, we're not going to move forward with this until obviously, because there is a lot of work. Um, I will be meeting with the select board and I'm hoping to get one person to join me just so that we can sort of really make our vision clear, um, particularly since I do not have the experience from the past dealing with a lot of the frustrations and the experiences you guys have. We'll have the conversation with Dan, Mo, Marianne, all of those guys to see, you know, lay it out for them. This is an overview of what we want to do. Um, this is sort of how we see things playing out over the next six, 12, 18 months. And that's when we'll, have a better gauge of whether or not, you know, I, I think Marlene was right. Dan called a, a good number of us. Mo called a good number of us. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they, I, they take this seriously. I think they're also just trying to figure out how to make this work within the system of town government. It's a government, it's, there's bureaucracy, unfortunately. Um, and, you know, trying to navigate that with what we're trying to accomplish is not easy. Um, so, Let's see what they have to say. And you know, we can go from there. Cynthia. Hey, um, I like the idea of a subcommittee to look at this. There's one feature of the Arlington process for complaints that uh, I haven't seen the, the write-up of the one from the 90s. And that's the very central role of the uh, Arlington Police Department. But they were they were sharing. Um, situations and um, I know we've been fortunate to have uh, Belinda right now in the past we've had some other people 
at our meetings. But I think in terms of even the individual complaint process and that that's, it's important to find, uh, to think about that because that's an, a way in which it gives it a grounding with the town. Marley. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they, when I was on the Arlington um, Commission, the chief of police worked hand in hand with the Human Rights Committee. They, he felt um, something happened and he immediately contacted the Human Rights Committee um, and they were real partners. So I think that's another piece that we would have to establish to mm -hmm. have a real partnership um, uh, in terms of reporting and talking about things. Not that we don't have, I mean, we, we, we have representation with Belinda, but um, I think a, another way of trying to understand um, how we can communicate and really make this move forward, but that's something the subcommittee could have in part of the proposal. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, so how do you guys feel about the, I mean, this is a lot to take on, um, but we've also been talking about community engagement and education. Um, and these, you know, things are gonna come up. Uh, for example, Cynthia, we had been talking about the, as I mentioned before, the policing issue, um, housing. We've talked about housing in a couple of the meetings that um, since I've been on, uh, on this committee, how do you guys feel about that as a priority, um, how do we, do we want to, I don't know, take that on more formally, you know, figure out how we can engage the community more with other issues so that um, we have a more visible face to um, the town of Needham. Jen. I, I think that we are uniquely positioned to do this in a very, important and big way for the town. I think that that many of us um, are actively engaged with lots of different kind of um, parts of the town and that that um, we I think a, a lot of what I hear about from people is a, is a frustration in not kind of understanding how to get their concerns heard by you know, the capital T town. And I think that, um, I guess it's, it's maybe an offshoot of the complaint process, but to the extent that we could provide a forum, intentionally create forums for people to be able to bring their concern and, and have some feedback and response from our town leaders kind of contemporaneously, you know, in, in a more natural dialogue type way that I think that we would, um, we would just, I think we would progress a lot because I think that oftentimes, you know, the frustration builds because people don't feel like they're getting heard. And, you know, 90% of my day at work is telling people things that they don't wanna hear or telling them no to the things that they're asking me to do. But I think that, that part of what, um, Part of what my goal is, is to make sure that people feel heard. And I think that oftentimes, even if you're giving people information that they don't necessarily want or agree with, if you can validate what they are saying and give them an opportunity to get it all off their chest and, and show that you care about what they're saying, that people walk away feeling at least like, like they've had their audience. And I think that that is a big part of what is is brewing right now, um, at least from what I'm hearing from, from different community members is that they feel like that they're, they're raising all of these issues and it's just kind of going into this netherland where, um, where, where they're not hearing back uh, as to what information they're sharing, what concerns they're sharing. And I think that, you know, I, I know we have the restrictions of the open meeting laws and kind of the way that these, you know, public hearings exist currently and I guess you know I don't have an answer off the top of my head how how it should look but I I don't know I, I'm not convinced that there's not a way for us to have more of a natural organic dialogue going between 
town leadership and town community members differently than the way that we are doing it. I think that that even when we have, um, and when we, when we say we, I guess I'm lumping us in with the select board in that we're part of, of their efforts to have, for example, the listening session that we had last summer um, around race equity issues in town that, um, that we need to have some, some more creative thinking about how to, how to make that more of a, of a dialogue where somebody is speaking and somebody's responding as opposed to just a lot of reporting out where messages kind of miss each other and it doesn't necessarily feel like you're being listened to. Um, and I'm sorry, this is a way rambling message, <laughs> so I'm really too tired. But my point, my point being that I think that, you know, I hear, I hear from the select board members that they are working so hard on all of these things. And I know that they are, because I can see, I have, have the ability or the proximity to their work to see that they are working really hard. And then I hear from these community members who are like, we've been working so hard. We did all, you know, we have all these questions and all this information that we want to get out there and nobody's listening to us. And so it's like both sides are really frustrated with the other side. And, you know, we're not a bunch of competing super PACs. We are a town of neighbors trying to like make our entire community work. And so I think that there has to be a way for us to get in a room that's public, that's um, you know, on the record in the way it needs to be, but that allows people to ask the questions that make them feel like they're getting answers on both sides, because I think otherwise it just kind of festers and I don't think it's healthy for us at all as a community. That's my soapbox, <laughs> sorry. Marlene. Um, do we need to take a vote on this as our priority or do you feel like you just have the general consensus from the committee? I don't know how you feel about that. I, I mean, I feel like we have pretty general consensus, right? My, I mean, what I'm hearing is the discrimination complaint process is our number one priority that ties into community um, engagement and education, um, particularly with regards to the way the town government works uh, and with regards to the response network, we have to see how that plays out with NDI um, to see where we fit into the picture of that organization. So while that's not necessarily a top priority, we're also not going to completely push it off on the back burner because there's a lot of work that's still um, needs to be done about around that community, that organizational structure. Does that sound good to you guys? Katie. Just um, mulling Jen on what you were sharing and I guess um, just two thoughts is one, I if that disconnect that you're describing it would be, in my mind, incredibly helpful if you or this group could propose a solution for how to bridge that gap. You know, I think about community engagement and education, and it's very clear that this group is very capable of doing that. But if there is no work plan, like there's no, I can, I've, there's so much community engagement and education that needs to be done and everyone here knows this, but I, I guess I'm just making a suggestion or a request that, you know, if, if there is a concrete forum or processes or, you know, something that you want to set up or a particular issue that you decide in the next six months you want to do community engagement around, I mean, that's sort of like articulating what you want to spend your time on and having Tina talk to the chairs about it, that sort of thing would make the communication and the work, I think, more concrete and hopefully more productive. I'd also say, and I hope this doesn't contradict what I just said, but um, please don't wait for a formal structure if you have feedback for things we can and should be doing differently. If, if you know, any of you here that there's somebody trying to talk to the town who feels like it's falling on deaf ears, 
you all have my phone number or my email. I would love to hear about that. And until I hear it from you, I would have no way of knowing necessarily that it exists. So, you know, again, formal structures and plans help over the long term, but these relationships are in place now. So please use them. Katie, just on that note, right before this meeting, um, Equal Justice Needham held a, um, a forum, I guess, for lack of a better word, talking about um, some of the work that they had done in collecting and analyzing data around um, Needham Police and the um, Marvin Henry report, um, the Tidwell report, rather. And several of the um, people on that call, again, like, you know, I hate to even characterize it as EJN because it's not EJN. These are our Needham neighbors who, who have invested a lot of time and, and care into, into the raising the questions. Um, and I, I know that they have sent their, um, their findings and their reports and their questions to, um, to the select board and to Nuari and to the, and to the Human Rights Committee, um, you know, and, and feel like that they're not hearing anything back that several of the, or at least two of the presenters tonight mentioned very specifically feeling like it was just going out there to nothing. And um, that they want a meeting or? I think that they, I, I don't really know. I mean, I, I can't speak for them to other than to say that I think that they were looking for some kind of response. Well, I think they were looking for a response. They sent, the, they sent their findings and they were looking for a response. Or someone to ask questions to directly, you know, or, or to have, again, that dialogue about. Well, they, they definitely had questions. And when the select board presented the Tidwell report on there, there was no opportunity to ask questions, not in a chat, not in a Q&A, and no, no public anything. So, so, so that's hugely frustrated to so many. And that's what I heard on the meeting right before this one, I was on that as well. Um, you know, so it's that I suggest the entire select board and the town manager watch the recording of that because it will be made available and and you'll, you'll get a clearer picture into the frustration. And the people who are hearing about it for the first time were like, well, why didn't you tell the select board this? Or why didn't you bring this to the, and they said, we did, we, and we got no response, so. Just no, the concrete, the, getting specific is helpful and I, I will follow up. Cynthia? Hey, um, I think it is always helpful to get specific and I won't remember, I think it was, was it two years ago in May, Jen, that we worked on uh, with the school department trying to get a community forum and part of it came out of your work with the uh, real group that they thought the Human Rights Committee could help with community engagement. And we, we had the pleasure of Dan Gutekans coming to a number of our meetings. And Jen and some other people worked on that to be a community forum. And I really want to respect the school department in terms of they wanted the, the it was supposed to be a dialogue kind of thing and there were supposed to be little groups. They wanted to be sure that the community knew what they'd done the, to set the stage to then have the, the response or interaction and due to problems with time and all, that second part didn't happen. And some people were so furious because they've been looking forward to this very kind of thing that you're talking about. And again, I don't want to try to to criticize, but I'm just saying there's an example where because of Jen's involvement in the in the real coalition or whatever it's called, bringing it back and having Dan, then as we did a kind of follow up as to what had been good or not so good about that, and Dan Gutekinds came back to another meeting, we tried to tell him this is this is the, the sore point. You have the blogs, you have whatever out there and have people's response. Maybe they're not reading those things or maybe as they respond, you haven't, there hasn't been the school reaction to that. And I remember we brainstormed ways and I think Carrie was involved with that too about bringing it closer to individual schools. We were really, I thought that was a really productive way 
we were doing things. And obviously people were overwhelmed with living with the pandemic. So we couldn't continue that kind of discussion. But I think we've done so much work with the schools that it might be good to list that as um, one of the priorities for the community education. And hopefully and hope we can try again on the engagement. Amelia? I, I was thinking about what Jen said and Carrie about people needing to talk to one another. And you can't really have that um, open, honest dialogue on a Zoom conference. Or when, I mean, as, as interesting as Noari meetings are, it's uh, that people are expressing their point of view, but it's their point of view and, and then uh, the, the select board point of view, it just goes back and forth. It's not really a comfortable, um, open discussion. And maybe we need to be creative about ways we could foster that. And I think of at my neighbor's table as one example, where I have been at, uh, how many have we had, Marlene? Seven, eight? Uh, at my neighbor's this, table. this will be our 11th, so we've had 10. But the in-person ones, there was always a select board member at somebody's table uh, or a school committee member or some, but they were sitting together with members of the community, with a facilitator and having some really interesting discussions that weren't threatening, but were very provocative. Um, we had guidelines uh, about how those conversations would take place. Another example is the Needham Diversity Initiative, the Diversity Summit. We have a breakout rooms and uh, breakout sessions, workshops. And I remember years ago creating cases where a case would be presented and everybody would read the case and then engage in a discussion. And the case was always a controversial situation. Something happened in school, something happened uh, in the police department, but it, it was this situation that everybody, and they could sort of distance themselves a little bit from it, but they could express their feelings without being attacked or without being embarrassed. And, um, and I think maybe we could think about ways to, to facilitate that, that kind of dialogue that, that so desperately needs to take place. Where is it taking place? Formally, on the community blogs, uh, it's not getting anywhere. Uh, there's no resolution. There's just people stating their points of view, um, and but not thinking about the other person's perspective. No, that's a great point. Uh, anybody else have any thoughts on sort of where we've been going tonight with, with this? I'd like to, if um, we can, um, figure out the subcommittee to work on, I, because I would like to get to um, meeting with the select board soon, sooner rather than later. So um, Marlene, how are you imagining this subcommittee who um, sort of the skill sets that you need for this and how many people? Um, I think three people would probably be enough. Okay. Um, and I think to, you know, put together, um, look at what's what we used to have in town and maybe look at a few other towns, not just Arlington. Um, and, um, uh, and, you know, start to work it out what the ways we might be able to do it I mean there, you know so for example um Drake talked about you know uh people are on call but then when I talked to Belmont they have a phone in so you know there's different ways and I just think we people need to to be you know thinking about that and and I guess you're assuming that I'm going to be on the subcommittee I um I am happy to be on the subcommittee but I need some um people who have some dedicated time to do, to work with. Well, I think three, I, will, no, I, think, I don't know if you think that's enough, but. Yeah, I think that's fine. I'm happy to join you on that. Anybody else? We need one more person. I can do it. Julie, does that work?
Katie? Great. I just wanted to chime in to say, um, I've also been doing some research around, um, and Drake raised this, um, when complaints are about a town employee or if coming from a town employee and kind of that, um, he was describing that handoff of like when the professionals get involved, which I take as like HR and attorneys. Um, so I have been doing research into that piece of it as well. Um, so we can, um, you know, we'll, we'll have to mesh, mesh those two systems and figure out where they intersect. Um, but I just wanted everyone to be aware that I, I'll have something um, that I can share. Okay, great. So Marlene and Julie, I'll, um, we'll touch base with you guys over the next day or two, just to figure out what next steps we want to take and where we can do our research and split up the work and um, let's try to get something put together. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds fine. Um, and, and in tandem, are you going to be talking to the select board? Yeah, I need to, I, I need to go to them with something a little bit more concrete. Um, because, I mean, I, I heard yeah. loud and clear what Carrie said. We don't want to just be doing all this work and then shut down. <laughs> so, um, uh, so I, I want to, you know, make sure that, um, that there's a feeling that, you know, they're going to be reasonable and let us move forward with this. Yeah, no, I, yeah, absolutely. That's, I don't, yeah. Katie. Um, so Tina, your request, I did check in the, Matt and Mo is the chair and vice chair ha are holding time, um, on their, for the next chair's meeting, which is the 25th, a week from now, um, in the morning, if you want to use that time to talk. Um, the 25th of, no. okay. Do you know what time? So you and one other, um, 8.30 AM. And if that time doesn't work, we'll, we'll reschedule something, but it, it at least is held if you want to use it. That's fine. Okay. Um, does anybody want to or have the time to join in on that meeting? You guys trust me? <laughs> I open up every every day just about. So the mornings are so tough for me or else I would definitely go on with you. <laughs> so what was it the 25th? 8.30. Yes. 8.30. Yeah. Yep. On Zoom. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, thank you. I'll follow up with you guys um, with a link. And I'm sorry, who would be on that? It's Matt and... Mo and Matt as the chair and vice chair. Okay. Katie, are the elections for chair and vice chair, that comes in April after the town election, is that correct? <laughs> you are testing me as my first uh, election that I've been through under this town charter. Um, that would make sense to me. <laughs> I, I think it's usually in April, but I just was just one. That's okay. You, you can find out. You don't. I don't. I don't know. I'll be honest. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> yep. And then on the um, community engagement and education piece, I think since we've been talking about it, we can mention it um, at our meeting, Marlene, but as Katie said, we might wanna have something, we don't need a plan, but is there anything, you know, Jen, you were talking about needing this forum, the response, the feedback, making sure that the, there's more of a bridge that gaps the, um, the bridges the gap between the community and the select board, um, anything, it, you don't have to answer, you know, I don't just take some time to think about it, but before the 25th, just some key talking points that we can go to them with. Um, and if there's anything specific, any examples, that would be great. Well, I think Amelia had some really good points. We do have a good example of some great community engagement, even in this weird Zoom time. And that is that at my neighbor's table, those um, people walk out of those events feeling like a million bucks, <laughs> you know, like that they've really met their neighbors, thought about something hard and like, you know, grown <laughs> in a way. And so that might be a great model, you know, and I don't know, I, I mean, I guess, 
you know, I don't know if you could have um, an event where people were put into breakout rooms with, you know, maybe a select board member and a human rights committee member together with some community members who got the chance to kind of um, ask questions and talk. And like, maybe, maybe there are some guided um, topics or questions to kind of anchor the discussion, but, you know, it, it may be less of a, um, a formal fact-finding kind of event and more just a relationship building, let, let's listen to each other kind of piece, you know, and it might be a way for, um, for people to just feel like they have a, a, a more intimate touch with our town government. You know? I love that idea, Jen. Yeah. Yeah, I think that okay. is a, oh, Amelia, sorry, sorry. Um, but in, in general, I think that is a good way to open it up to the town that, you know, in some capacities has felt that it hasn't been easy to reach or obtain or approach people that are in town leadership. So I think that is something, if we could do it, that would be well received. And as long as there's some kind of guidance and, you know, the structure and the way, you know, you're not coming at anybody or doing anything disrespectful in that sense, but asking real questions I'm hoping to get real answers with the people that are helping to influence and make decisions in the town. I, I, re I really like that idea. Well, it's possible that at my neighbor's table could actually facilitate it since we have a pretty much down path. And you have the brand. I can certainly talk about that, Tina, since I chair that committee. Yeah. Okay. Amelia. I can think of another situation. Um, that may be an example of, uh, of a way to have, to build relationships and to engage people uh, in, in a dialogue. And it was one of the first Needham Diversity Initiative um, was, um, summits. And we had breakout sessions and I wrote a case about a situation um, which uh, I facilitated and engaged people in conversation. But there were two facilitators. It was me and it was it was a Jerry Wasserman, the, the select board member that passed away. Mm -hmm. was it, he, was, he was school committee, wasn't he? No, who was the, the was, person that passed away? It was Jerry, Jerry Wasserman. He, he passed. It, was, it was Jerry Wasserman took Jerry a Wasserman. really big role in that first diversity initiative. And it really and, made a difference. Yeah, and the two of us facilitated the conversation. I being from human rights committee and diversity and, and, and it was all members of the community and it was a wonderful interaction. Uh, mm -hmm. And we learned so much from each other. In fact, it was so um, uh, satisfying that when the, the discussion was over, we actually all sat down and had lunch together. It almost didn't want to stop talking, but that relationship building and the respect that emerged from that situation was so maybe that you know planning an activity like that which is more informal and we might even do something like that at a diversity summit which is a uh, long way um or organize uh, an event closer in time but but that is another example where we teamed up we're a select board member or a, or it could be somebody from the police department it could be somebody from the school department uh, together with a human rights uh, member, um, facilitating a conversation together. And Amelia, you trained people about how to do that. I remember going to the training session for all the people who were doing the different breakout sessions. And there was a, a structure for it that was, I think that was really important because there was potential in some of those situations for things to have just become a negative, uh, not a dialogue. We have a good memory. I have a background in case methodology, which is the Harvard Business School model. Um, and there is a way um, that, that you, you uh, facilitate those conversations with care. But, uh, but anyway, it's, it's not that complicated. But, but that was just one example that uh, I can think of that would be applicable. That's great. Thank you. Anything else on this? No? Okay. Um, like I said, I, I feel like we're moving in the right direction. I know there's a lot of frustration and maybe it's my 
you know, like bright eyed, bushy tail naivete and I'm going to get knocked on my ass after the 25th. But uh, right now I'm feeling really good about where we're moving. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can um, work out some of these issues um, in the, in the near term. Um, do you, let's move on to reports. Katie, do you have anything from the select board? Um, I guess only just to, I, I, Tina shared the statement from um, Kate and the police chief around the killings in Georgia. So I really just want to echo, um, it's, it's horrible. And I wish I could say it's surprising, um, but there's mm -hmm. been a lot of hate um, being said for a long time. And um, so I, I'm glad we're speaking out. I'm glad there's a response and a vigil and um, that's my only addition tonight. Cynthia. <laughs> um, while we have Katie and talking about the select board, I just had an email from the people who are planning the vigil and said, they wanted to find a way to formally invite all the select board members to be present. We're not asking them all to, you know, give a talk, but they're also going to invite the state rep and the state senators. So uh, can we consider it done by telling you? <laughs> or <laughs> if, if, if whoever is uh, uh, organizing, you know, the speakers just wants to, you're saying not speak. If you can just send me an email, I'll extend it to all of them, yes. Okay, I'll tell them yep. I'll do that. <laughs> Great, thank you. Belinda, anything from the police department? No, there's nothing new to report. Okay, how are things, can I ask you, how are things going with your, um, have you started the training yet on um, the new policies, procedures? I, we had, the last time we talked about it, you had mentioned that maybe April, you would have some sort of handle on that. So I did take the seminar on police reform, but there's just a lot that's be, still being worked on from the state. And so it has to filter down to us but we are in the process of updating a lot of our policies and getting all our trainings up to par right now. So we're actively working on it, but we're still waiting for the state to implement what they need to implement. But probably maybe in May, we can start engaging in some, some conversation and maybe the police chief can join us and just kind of go over, just give an overview of what in fact we're doing right now while we get, everyone gets moving forward with the police reform initiative. Okay, thanks. And Jen, you mentioned um, that you were in touch with Denise Garlick's office. Has there been any movement on that? There has not. Basically, what I told her was that we were in kind of a holding pattern right now, and so that I would get back to her when we were in a position to kind of move on it. But um, both she and Representative, Gar she being one of um, Rep Garlick's uh, legislative aides, are both very um, interested in working on it with us. So we're, when we are ready to try to pitch that again. Um, okay, we'll that's awesome. Thanks. Um, Jared and Sophia, anything from you guys? Um, I'll just say that it was good to see Mr. Seacott's email to the students after the killings in uh, Georgia. So that was really nice. I mean, after anything, when anything happens, um, it's good to see, you know, just addressing it. I do think in my classes personally, um, there's been talk, but not a lot of talk compared to, you know, um, like the Black Lives Matter protests and that sort of stuff. So I do think at the school, it's, uh, it's a work in progress with that. Yeah, I agree. Um, I haven't been in person this week, but um, I have been like having my classes online and I'm kind of waiting to see right now if any of my classes will respond or make any sort of like statements or talk to the students at all about what, what was going on. Okay, Marlene? I, I know that Beth Pinels, who does uh, own your piece at the high school is um, trying to get some students to come to the vigil and she's spreading the word about about the vigil. There also was a very nice um, letter from the superintendent also about it. Yeah. I didn't see Mr. Seacott's, but I saw it from the superintendent, which was really- Yeah, cool. that went out today, I think. Yeah, yeah. I saw that too. 
Also, just something to add is with CCOR, um, you know, creates conversations on race at the high school. Um, now we are going to start going into freshman classrooms next week to begin, not actually going in, I think on Zoom or something, I'm not really sure how the format is right now, but, um, you know, doing our presentations just on um, race, like race equity. And so hopefully, um, you know, we've kind of set out plans each individual group for those um, but hopefully after these killings that's definitely something else that can be addressed more to the ninth graders great thank you guys jen anything from real coalition no there's no update there that i am aware of okay and amelia Anything on Indigenous Peoples Day, the initiative? No, uh, and Cynthia is uh, in that subgroup too. Um, the um, students, um, it's Nick and Fernanda are going to present to the school committee, I think in April, but in, in March, there's a committee and some people will be speaking in their behalf. Um, they will not make a formal presentation to the school committee in, in, at the March meeting, but in the April meeting, they will. And they have had a conversation with Dan and there's been a lot of support. They wrote a statement. Um, so they're getting a lot of support from the school. Um, Cynthia, can you, do you remember anything? Yes, um, I think that the uh, support committee has been good at acknowledging that it's the young people's voices who we're, we're backing up and letting them to present their case. And I think that's, that's doesn't happen too often. I'm pleased that's happening. In the meantime, people may have noticed in Wellesley that the town meeting did approve changing it to Indigenous Peoples Day. Yeah. Which may make a difference to Needham that some nearby town has done that. Great. Anything else on any announcements that I missed? Amelia. Uh, not announcements, but um, this was th your third meeting that you said that you would uh, chair. And I'm just wondering where we go from here and what your thoughts are about, uh, we did have a little bit of conversation. We need to have someone chair the meetings, future meetings. Do you feel up to it still? Yeah, I do. If you guys are cool with it. It's fantastic. Can, can we uh, formally uh, nominate you as chair? It's, to me, it's not just chairing the meetings. I mean, there's a lot more that goes into it. And you're doing such a great job. Um, I would like to nominate you to, to chair the committee. And I don't know if you would accept that nomination, but. I will. Um, I think I told Amelia I'm in the process of moving my business to Newton and we're going through a big build out right now, but um, this is really important to me. So I will, over the next couple of months, it's gonna be a little hairy, <clears throat> but I'll make it work. Thank goodness my husband and my kids are decent human beings and they've been awesome. So <laughs> they're picking up the slack. So that's great. So if, if I nominate you and you accept, then can we take a vote? <laughs> I second it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, Sophia. Yes. <laughs> Cynthia. Yes. John. Carrie. Yeah. Amelia. Yes. Ashok. Yes. Marcus. Yes. Jared. Yes. Marlene. Most definitely. Julie. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Tina. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Thank you, know, you guys. Do you want to say exactly how long you're planning on your um, reign to be? Like, are you committing just for the end of uh, this NHRC year, or are you anticipating movement taking on 21 to 22 as well? Is it uh, is it on the calendar year, Katie? Jen. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, yeah, well, it I was can check. I, I can check. The election was 
supposed to be in June. Yeah. <laughs> so it's um so it starts in June, but it could start right now until next year. <laughs> okay. yeah. Let's she may it. say no, don't push your luck. <laughs> no, no, she, I think she's gonna say yes. Yeah, I'll do it. Uh, yes, course, congratulations. Thank you. Hey. Um, thank you. Okay, so I owe Julie and Marlene an email. We're gonna get this ball rolling. Um, is Am I missing anything else? There are a couple of announcements. The ongoing Confronting Racial Injustice panel series, you guys should have a link to that on your agenda. Um, and then the March 21st at my neighbor's table, um, that's happening. I have Bud as the next recorder. Um, I will confirm that with him. If for some reason he is not able or willing to do it, I may need to reach out for a volunteer for um, somebody to take notes at the next meeting. Miss yes. Um, you might also consider um, a co-chair uh, or yeah. assistant or whatever. And maybe we might discuss that at the next meeting or at least divvy up. I, I really think it's difficult to have to be alone in that position. There's a lot of to do of work. Yep. Um, so maybe all of us might want to think about uh, filling that role uh, for our next meeting. Okay. And I'll touch base with um, with you and Jen and Marlene, since you guys have had experience, just other sort of, as you said, little things like answering, who's gonna answer the email? Um, who is responsible for disseminating information? Can it be come from any one of us or does it have to filter through the chair first and then um, you know, get sent out to the group? So I'll touch base with you guys about that and we'll, let's come up with a list of things that um, I need to keep in mind and, and we can maybe hopefully sort of delegate that stuff out. Katie. Um, Amelia had made a request that we take a group photo to put in the annual report. Um, so when, uh, if it's an appropriate time, I will take a print screen uh, of the group, if that's okay. Marcus, can we see you, Marcus, so you can be in the picture? Ashok, we can barely see you. You're looking at... Oh, okay. <laughs> Hold on one second. I'm trying to get the camera. Marcus, Hold on. Okay. I'm gonna give me one second. No, no. I'm just trying to get the <laughs> camera. It says I have to go to my settings, and I don't know why this is happening. <laughs> All right, give me two seconds. Okay. Well, Marcus is figuring this out. Carrie, I'm gonna channel you and your IT skills. But when it's time, I want everyone to not look at the screen. I want you to look directly into the camera um, and smile so that we look like we've been doing Zoom for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, hold on, let's give Marcus another minute. How you doing there? <laughs> we lost him. He's having technical difficulties. I think he's getting dressed. <laughs> <laughs> There he is. Nice job. All right. Okay, like, so I'll- I was trying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give us a count and on three, look at the camera. Smile if you so choose. One, two, three. Okay, hold on. Let me just take a look at it and make sure no one looks- Ridiculous. Not appropriate for- Fantastic. Great. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Could Thank you, you send me a, um, a copy so I can insert it in the, the copy I have of the annual report? Yes, I will email to you. Thank you. Can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? So move. Second. Second. Okay. Sophia. Yes. Cynthia. Yes. Jen. Yes. Carrie. Yes. Amelia. Yes. Ashok? Yes. Marcus? Yes. Jared? Yes. Marlene? Yes. Julie? Yes. I am also a yes. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you everyone. Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair. <laughs> See you at the vigil.